Okay, in this video we'll look at the next example of finding the volume between two surfaces. These surfaces are given by z equal to 4 minus y squared and z equal to x squared minus 4. The thing I'd like you to notice here about each of these equations is that d is quadratically determined by only one of the variables. So I see y squared here, a quadratic expression involving just y, and that's determining the z-coordinate. This equation, for instance, puts no restriction on the x-coordinate. It doesn't appear in there at all, so there's no constraint on it. And what we're expecting to see is something that looks like a parabola. There's a minus coefficient here, minus y squared, so it's going to be opening downwards. In this one, I see x squared minus 4 because it has a positive coefficient in front here, 1 times x squared. This will be opening upwards, and it should be something parabolic looking. And because it doesn't depend on the other coordinate, and this one doesn't depend on its uh, other coordinate at all, what we're going to see is what's called a parabolic cylinder of sorts here. What we're seeing is something that has a parabolic profile, and this one has a parabolic profile this way, but they extend infinitely in the other coordinates direction because there's no constraint whatsoever on the other variable and just looking at the coefficients allows us now to identify which one is which. The one opening upwards here is the x squared minus 4. The one opening downwards here is the 4 minus y squared. We want to find the volume of the region that's trapped in between those two surfaces. Take a minute just to look at that picture and really think about what I'm talking about. There is this top part of the surface. There is this bottom part of the surface here. And in between those two is the space where the air is trapped, if you want to think about it that way. And we want to find the volume of that region trapped in between the two. So the top of the surface is given by this, bottom, by this uh, downward opening parabola. And the bottom of the, the region that we're interested in is uh, bounded by the upwards opening parabola. So let's uh, think about how we're going to find this. And the first thing you need to do is understand how those two curves intersect each other. I want you to imagine uh, looking down from the top and looking down, imagine if you're looking down from the positive z-axis and you're staring down from the top and looking at that region, what would you think you see? If you projected it down onto the xy plane, what kind of uh, figure would you expect to see down here in the plane if you were to look at its shadow casted down? And to figure that out, we look at it algebraically, we look at its intersection. They intersect where their z-coordinates are the same, so I'm going to take their z-coordinates on those surfaces and set them equal to each other. And now I'm going to rearrange this equation until it looks like something that makes sense to me. Well, I'm going to um, move the variables to both sides. I have x squared plus y squared, and if I move the constants to both sides, I'm going to have equal to 8. So my equation for their intersection is x squared plus y squared is equal to 8. That's something circular. In fact, we're saying that r squared is equal to 8. So what we're seeing here is that if we projected all those points that are inside those two surfaces, trapped in between those two surfaces, that the boundary of that projection would be some sort of circle, and that circle is the circle with radius square root of 8. In fact, all the points casted down in that will give me some region in the plane that I'm calling r, and it's a fact, in fact this disk of radius square root of 8. So R is the projection onto the xy plane of the solid that I'm interested in. Okay, now we know where to integrate. The question is, what do we integrate? And so we're going to integrate over R to get the volume. And what I want to do is find the volume underneath that top surface. So I should integrate that. But I don't want to have any of the stuff that's in the volume underneath the bottom surface. I need to take that out of the total to get the volume in between the two. So I'm going to take away the, the bottom surface and integrate that. Algebraically, what that means is to take that top surface. Notice that that's the parabola opening downwards. So I'm going to take 4 minus y squared. And I'm going to subtract from that the bottom surface, the parabola opening up and that's x squared minus 4, and subtract the 2. Notice how I have the parentheses here. I'll have to carefully distribute the sign through when I actually do the calculation. Let's just simplify the expression. It's going to be 8, 4 plus 4 when I distribute, minus x squared minus y squared, which is the same as summing up the squares first and then subtracting. 
And I did that because that looks like polar coordinates. Let's convert that to polar coordinates. I'm motivated by that expression there, and I'm motivated by the fact that the region should be circular and polar coordinates is appropriate for that. So here's what I'm going to do next. We'll express it in terms of polar coordinates. It's going to be 8 minus r squared. Because I'm going to polar, I get this factor of r when I write it as an iterated integral. So r dr d theta. A sensible choice of theta is to go once around the circle from theta equal to 0 to theta equal to 2 pi. So there's my limits of integration for the first variable. Now think about a generic value of theta that is a ray emanating from the origin. I'm immediately in my circle and I don't exit it until my radial value is square root of 8. So I'm going to integrate that from 0 to square root of 8. And now I have an iterated integral. Very straightforward to calculate this and that will give us the volume of that region trapped between those two surfaces. Uh, just to talk about how you would do the integral, the first thing you would do is expand the r through, multiply, so it would be 8r minus r cubed, and then integrate it term by term. And in fact, I left that calculation on the corresponding uh, handout, which has the evaluations of the two examples that we're discussing.